previous sessions, we understood that an algorithm is nothing but set of instructions for solving the given problem. Also, if you have multiple solutions for the same problem, you need to analyze them and select the efficient one for the given problem. But the next question is, how do we compare the algorithms to select the best one? Let us assume that the given problem is P and for that we have two solutions S1 and S2 solves the same problem. That means S1 is nothing but set of instructions for solving the problem P. S2 is another set of instructions which is solving the same problem P. Now how do we compare S1 and S2 to see which one is better? Comparison is nothing but comparing the behaviors. Behaviors of the solutions S1 and S2. Based on what we can say which one is better. Can we think about all the parameters or properties which we can use to compare these solutions? One such parameter is execution time. That means, can we compare solutions S1 and S2 based on the execution times? Let us assume that S1 is taking some 5 seconds S2 is taking 10 seconds on some configurations. If we change the configuration, let us assume that initially we started with Intel mission. Then we moved on to power missions or mainframes. If we change the configuration of the missions on which we are running the algorithms, we will get the different execution times. That means the execution times are dependent on the configuration of the missions. So if you want to compare two solutions, we should be aware of the configuration of the missions which we are using for comparison. So which is very difficult to compare the algorithms in real time. Every time we cannot get the missions and see the configuration based on the missions, we can tell this solution 1 is better, solution 2 is better. So execution times is not the correct way of comparing the algorithms. So if you change the configuration, the execution times might be different. So for example, if we move S1 to S2 to mainframes, the execution times will be less. Based on this, we cannot say execution times can be used for comparing the algorithms. So definitely this is not a parameter for comparing the algorithms. What else we can think about? Can we think about any other parameter? Can we use lines of code? Let us assume that S1 is being coded in C or C++ and S2 is being coded in Java. Usually, for any algorithm, if we code it in C or C++, the number of lines will be more than compared with Java. It means, the same algorithm, if we code it in C, C++, the number of lines will be more and compared to the Java implementation. So, for example, if the, for the C, C++ implementation, if the code is taking some 10 lines, the same code in Java, it might be taking 3 or 2, 4 lines. If solution 1 is taking 10 lines and solution 2 is taking 3 lines based upon the programming language, can we say solution 2 is better than solution 1? Can you think about it? If you want to compare solutions based upon the programming language, Every time we have to know the details of the implementation. So, comparing the algorithms based on the programming language is not the correct criteria. We, when we are comparing some two algorithms, it should be independent of the configuration, it should be independent of the programming language or any other parameters except the input. Can we think of any parameter which we can use to compare the solutions which is independent of execution time, lines of code and at the same time programming language. It should be independent of all the parameters except the input. As we said like running time analysis is the behavior of the algorithm in terms of input. So that we call it as rate of growth.
what is rate of growth running time analysis as we said like it is the algorithm behavior in terms of input how the algorithm is behaving if we keep on increasing the input size but how do we define the behavior so rate of growth is nothing but representation of running time of the algorithm similarly representation of running space of the algorithm so the behavior of the algorithm is being defined by rate of growth at what rate the algorithm is taking for solving the given problem so if we keep on increasing the input size how much time the algorithm is taking how much space the algorithm is taking for solving the problem so if you are discussing in terms of running time how much time the algorithm is taking for solving the given problem if we keep on increasing the input size that means as larger values of input how the algorithm is behaving that we call it uh, that we represent in terms of rate of growth as an example consider metisort in metisort you all aware right the metisort complexity is n log n so here n is the input that means the number of elements in the given array and here, what is n log n what is n log n rate of growth that means if we keep on increasing the input size how the algorithm is behaving how much time the algorithm is taking for sorting the given elements so that we are calling it as rate of growth per matrix now let us see some commonly used rate of growth which will be using throughout our discussions these rate of growths were arranged in the increasing order from top to bottom you can see one is less than log n less than n less than n log n n square n cube n 2 power n when can we say that the algorithm has rate of growth 1 if we keep on increasing the input size if there is no change in the running time or running space we can say the rate of growth for the given algorithm is order of 1 let us take simple analysis let us assign input size n for the x axis and running time or running space for the given algorithm it can be either time or space as i said like irrespective of the input size if there is no change in the time or space for the given problem then we can say the rate of growth for the given problem is constant which is nothing but one that means if we keep on increasing the input size there is no change in the running time or running space of the given algorithm as an example consider this simple function here the parameter n is nothing but the input size but if you look at the function code there is some initialization i is equal to 0 and there is simple for loop which we are iterating from 0 to 9 that means 10 times so irrespective of the input size we are always executing the for loop only for 10 times so what are the input size there is no change in the running time or running space of this algorithm so in this case we can say the rate of growth for this algorithm or function is 10 what are the constant as long as it is constant as long as it is constant which is not varying in terms of n the input we can say the rate of growth is 1 whether it is 10 20 or 100 doesn't matter as long as it is constant we can say the rate of growth for the given algorithm or solution is order of 1 okay similarly we can think about all the remaining rate of growth just to get the clear understanding now let us get the log n complexity so now let us understand log n that means if we keep on increasing the input size how the algorithm is behaving at what rate the running time is increasing at what rate the running space is increasing so if any algorithm which has the run rate of growth as log n usually the curve will be something like this so this is the log n curve that means if we keep on increasing the input size if we keep on increasing the input size the running time or running space of the algorithm will be increasing in terms of log n so we will get something like this now let us consider the next rate of growth n so if we keep on increasing the input size the running time or running space is increasing in terms of n then we can say the rate of growth for the given algorithm is n so then we will get the curve something like this very straight curve that means 
If you keep on increasing the input size, the running time or running space of the algorithm is increasing in terms of n. Examples for this one are linear sets. Now let us go on to the next one, n log n. So in this case, any algorithm which has rate of growth n log n for a given input n, how the algorithm is behaving if you keep on increasing the input size. So we'll be getting something like this one. The next one. We'll be getting something like this. N Q. Similarly for two power n. Exponential. These are the commonly used rate of growth which we'll be using throughout our discussions.